Okay guys, so next up on our 13s for 1300 project is diff gears and a mini spool, all right? So diff gears will take it from 323 gears, which is what's in it at the moment, to 3.89, which will be worth like around four tenths of a second by itself according to the computer. And, um, and then we've got the mini spool. And the mini spool will help us with our traction. The mini spool basically replaces the spider gears within your diff center and your axles go in it, so your axles turn at the same speed, all right? So it's like a limited slip diff, but without the slip, okay? So we definitely need the traction. At the moment, we don't have too much traction because it only spins one wheel. Allow me to demonstrate. Okay guys, so this is what it looks like under the rear end of a 1998 EL Falcon, okay? Alright, so as you can see, it's a live axle rear with watts linkage and coil spring. Um, you know, the diff itself is called a Borg Warner 78 series, alright? So, the 78 series is quite a strong diff, um, good solid unit. Plenty of these in Australian cars, like they came out in Fords and Holdens and Valiants and all sorts of things, you know, Nissan Pitaras, you know, there's there's so many different uh, vehicles with these types of diffs in them in Australia, you know, they were just the great diff. Now, there's plenty of vehicles out there running 10 second quarters with these diffs in them as well, so they're a solid diff as well. Uh, 28 spline, the earlier versions were 25s, but 28 spline diff um, is this one. So, you know, it's going to handle a bit of abuse, which is fine for me because uh, I'm going to abuse it. All right, so now I said before that it was a 323 ratio, but uh, it turns out it's actually 308. I got that wrong. So 308 gears, uh, we're going to put 389 gears in it. 389 gears are going to be quite an upgrade for these, so we can expect to see like half a second gain just from the gears. All right, and then with the mini spool, the mini spool will help us with traction, so we should see a gain with that as well, uh, just through the better traction, you know. So anyway, first uh, port of call will be to undo this Watts linkage rear end and um, yeah, drain the diff and we'll see what we've got. Our uh, next move should be disconnecting the tail shaft because I really need to undo that um, pinion nut before I go too much further. I need to undo that while I can still put some tension okay so I've got my drive shaft out undone from the front flange which is up here the uh, and I've also managed to undo the pinion nut which I thought was going okay, to be so real the next bit. bit is undoing the drain plug here at the bottom of the diff housing so we undo it and drain all the diff oil now it's time to remove this uh, hat off the back all right so we've got one two three four five six seven uh, 13 mil bolts. Okay, so the handbrake cable runs across the back of the diff housing, and um, you know you got these little nylon guides. So if you slide the nylon guides out of their uh, little holders here, and release the handbrake cable, of course, and put the handbrake cable down below the bottom of the diff housing, it'll be out of your way. Makes things a hell of a lot easier. Okay, so there's the back of our diff with the cover off. Okay, we'll do some close-ups here. There's the gear, the main gear, the crown wheel gear. You can see 308 ratio there. Right there. Okay, so to remove these discs, which we'll have to do to get the axles out, get undo this Phillips head screw right here but it's really really tight so what I tend to do in these cases is get some vice grips on the end of the screwdriver and allows you and you push it from the end and turn and that allows you to crack them off just a little tip all right and I just go release the handbrake pull those discs off. Okay, so a handy tool to have around, even though you won't use it very often, is a slide hammer. You may not use it very often, but I'll tell you what, when you do use it, it saves you a lot of time and work. Now this is the important bit. 
always grasp the slide hammer by the end away from your slide. Don't grab it there, otherwise you're going to give yourself an ouchie. Alright, so there we go. Banging on that with a hammer or anything like that would have taken a long time. Okay, so when you've removed the four bolts holding the carrier in, you can't just pull that diff center out. You've got to spread the housing. Now the way I've spread the housing is using this chain arrangement. Alright, so you've got a chain going around that side, it goes out the front where I've got a jack, uh, the actual scissor jack that comes with the car, and then chain around the housing here too. So by putting pressure on the jack at the front, I'm actually spreading the housing. It's a bit of a pain in the ass to set up, but it's the easiest way for a um, home mechanic to spread the housing. Now there is pressure on that and uh, makes me a little bit nervous, so um, I would suggest don't try this at home. Um, I'll do it because I'll take responsibility for it if something goes wrong, but uh, I'd rather not have someone copy my ideas out there and hurt themselves because things under pressure, if they let go, uh, they can give you quite a nasty um, surprise. Okay, so now I'm going to pull the, uh, the center out and put her on the bench and we can get from under this bloody car. So there's our standard four pinion carrier outside the car. Now your bearing cups, make sure you uh, keep them for the sides that you uh, and make a note of which side they're going to be on. Okay, so we've got to start by removing the crown wheel. Now if you look at all these bolts, you can see there's a little L on them, okay? Indicates left hand thread, all right? So to undo them, you'll undo them in a clockwise man manner, okay? So, all right, little trick for uh, young players. Okay, so we've got eight bolts there to remove and then we'll be able to remove our crown wheel. So we talked about these bolts and how they're left hand thread. What I didn't mention was how tight the fuckers are done up. So when you've got the center out of the car it makes it kind of hard to uh, undo them. So what I've done is I've locked it in place in my hydraulic press okay now I haven't put any real pressure on it so it's not going to bend or damage anything but uh, it's just locked in place so it can't turn and that way I can undo these bolts without actually hurting anything Okay, so we're about to remove that crown wheel and split the uh, carrier apart. Now, in this case, very handy to have one of these. I call it a soft hammer. I'm not sure what the technical term is. See, I've um, given this one a few heavy whacks in my time. So anyway, basically you want to knock the, uh, the crown wheel off without damaging it, which this will do. comes off pretty easy to be honest. So you just work your way around. Okay. And there's our crown wheel through our eight gears. We won't need them anymore. Might uh Whack them on eBay or something like that, someone might want them. See how we go. Okay, so we're about to split this centre. Now this centre is a four pinion centre, okay? Um, but actually it's only got three pinion pins. It's got one long pin that runs right through the centre and two short ones. Now they're all held in place by these little roll pins, okay? Which you have to push, push out, okay? Now. You really need a good range of pins and punches to do one of these. I don't have a good range, unfortunately. So I've got a heavy punch 
and I've made up a light punch with an old screwdriver so I can knock out these little roll pins that are holding in uh, the pinion pins. Too many pins. Right, so there's the roll pins I was talking about. There's one there. I've already knocked out the one there. And there's one there as well. Right, so I've just modified a little uh, flat bladed screwdriver, turned it into a pin punch, and it works perfectly for this. Okay, so now the roll pins are out of the way, we can set about splitting the housing, which is just uh, done with a chisel. Okay, comes apart pretty easy. And there's the two halves of our carrier. Now we've got the side gears here. There's one of my side gears. Okay, so this is what it looks like inside a four pinion center. Right, so this is open center diff, no limited slip here. Now, we've got our um, pinion gears or spider gears, some people call them. All right, now because it's a four pinion center, we have four gears. If it was a two pinion center, we'd only have two gears. Okay, four pinion center is stronger than a two pinion because it spreads the load across four gears instead of two. So if you've got a preference, go with a four pinion. But for what we're doing, we're going to eliminate all this stuff, all right? So pretty much these gears are going, this cage in the middle is going, all we're keeping are these pins in the middle. That's the long pin that runs right through the guts, and then we've got these two short pins through these little pinion gears here. So we're basically ripping everything out and replacing it with a mini spool, and I'll show you that in a sec. Okay, so the next part in our little journey is removing the long pin that goes through the guts. Okay, so I'm going to pull, push that out so we can start removing the inside of the center. So we get our big punch. Probably always best to use safety glasses when whacking anything. All right, nothing should break here, but if something comes off the end of the, uh, the punch, you end up with a splinter in your eye, and again, guaranteed to give you a real bad day. see the, uh, the pinion pin coming right through. And there she blows. All right, so we'll be reusing that because that goes through the center of the mini spool. What we won't be reusing are these little pinion gears. Okay, so we can just toss them to the side. All right, now the fun part, removing these little gear, uh, little pins. So what you're gonna do here is actually smack one into the other and then back and it's just a pain in the bum. But anyway, it's gotta be done. So that one's through to there. pushes its little mate out the other side. There she goes. One little pin. Pull the pinion gear out. Pull the cage out. Now I can knock it out the other side. Again, pinion gear and a shim which we won't need. Another shim. And our other pinion pin. And our last side gear. Again, the side gears, we won't be needing them, so we'll uh, push them to the side. Okay, and there is our carrier with pretty much nothing in it. Okay, so there's our mini spool. As you can see, it's just a big chunk of iron, which will go straight in there like that and the pinion pins will go through there, lock it into place, so it locks it into this carrier, okay? 
So when it's locked into the carrier, there's not going to be any meshing of gears or anything like that. No gears to fail either. But what it means is when you turn the corners, you're going to be having a slight chirping effect on one wheel, which is, you know, not much fun on the street or in the wet, but for a drag strip, it's pretty much perfect because it means we'll fire straight down the strip and it'll be nice and controllable and predictable. It's exactly what we want. So I'll give you a close up of this mini spool. Okay, so there's our mini spool, 28 spline. All right, so 28 splines in there. And we have four pinion holes, one, two, three, four. Okay, and as you can see, there's no moving parts. It's just a big solid lump of metal. All right, and we'll drop that straight in the guts and push our pins through and that'll lock it into the center.